Evening, everyone. My name is Alana, and I am the founder and director of Belong, Be, Become, Wellbeing for Early Childhood Professionals. Uh, welcome to our monthly Facebook Live, where I share wellbeing tips and techniques for educators. And uh, this month, I've got the lovely Jessica Horn Kennedy, who is, first of all, a wonderful mentor and a great friend of mine. Uh, but also a qualified early childhood teacher with teaching experience across a range of age groups, including experience as a director, supervisor and mentor. Jess's work has occurred in diverse settings such as community adult education, parent run playgroups, Reggio Emilia inspired settings and Rudolf Steiner schools in both New Zealand and Australia. Jess holds a master's in education with honours from the University of New England. And currently she is working as the professional development, no, the pr manager of professional development at Cowrie New South Wales, and is also studying towards her PhD at the University of Sydney. So she's, she's a real amazing woman and I feel very honored to have her here tonight. So welcome Jess and how are you? <laughs> oh, Alana, it's great to be here. And it's, um, it sounds like a lot, but it's sort of, Put it in around life, you know, and it's um, yeah. it's important to me to be a lifelong learner, I think, and that's why I always joke with my my parents when I was in my early twenties that I'd be studying right to old age, and I think that's definitely <laughs> could be me. So it's great Aww. to be here with you, though. It's awesome. Oh, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Um, very very excited and had lots of good reception so far about um this idea of storytelling for educators, which um, is, is kind of a lost art in itself, I think, but I'd love you to just give a little bit of context or a lot of context about what that means to you and why this is an area of interest for yourself. Yeah, well, I guess, um, first of all, I, I'll tell you a little bit about my story as a, as a teacher and as a mentor. I still see myself as a, a teacher first and foremost, an early childhood teacher. And even though I'm not working directly with children now, I'm working with those who work with children. That's an incredible privilege um, to be able to sort of be on the periphery of early childhood practice, having known what that's all about, knowing um, the experiences that teachers go through um, and bringing that from my experiences to that. But my history started as an early childhood teacher many, many years ago in um, Dunedin and Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, so that's a really important thing before I jump into thinking about what storytelling is and telling you a little bit about my passion for storytelling. It's really important to know that that is a huge part of my narrative as an early childhood teacher. So I did my, um, my Bachelor of Education in Dunedin, New Zealand, and I still remember the cohort, the group that I studied with. I still remember my teachers um, that oh, taught wow. me <laughs> at Teachers College. And I remember experiences. I even remember, you know, songs and music that I was listening to in those days. So it was a, for, the reason I'm telling you that is that for me was, a, I guess, a really a, a threshold experience of um, who what has made me who I am as an early child teacher. And mm -hmm. thinking back to those early memories and then even thinking even further back to when I first started to be curious about young children and play. And that might have been when I was at the teenager and I did lots of babysitting and looking after, mm. um, you know, parents, um, friends, children and things like that. that. That perhaps was the early kind of, you know, beginnings of, of who I was to become in terms of early childhood teaching. So thinking about those sorts of things in terms of um, stories and the story of who we are is really important. But I guess the thing, that's my personal story. But mm. then it was interwoven with my interest in storytelling. And that became, I think I was telling you um, earlier, that that started with stories that my, my grandfather would have told me. And he used mm. to tell this amazing story. It's a couple of amazing stories he told. A story I remember about this a man who had a piece of chewing gum stuck to his shoe. And he told <laughs> us this amazing story about how when he stood up, the chewing gum stretched to the sky and, you know, we <laughs> So curious and thinking, oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. so there was the story of the chocolate house where everything was made of chocolate and you turned a tap on and lemonade came out. And to young children, oh, that was wow. like, what a magical place. And then that it story evokes so much imagination, yeah. doesn't it? Wow. I'm was, trying to imagine it now. <laughs> but 
with the child, you know, you can imagine how a really young child imagining all these things that they're probably only allowed occasionally, <laughs> that there's this yeah. world made of that. So that, I guess, the chocolate house story is one that I was told as, as a child, and then my dad told it to my um, to me. And so my grandfather told it to my cousins and me, and then my dad would tell it to me. And then I see my dad um, with my young daughter telling her the same story. And because I've heard that story many times, then I would tell it to her. So I guess for me, those family narratives, those stories that we have in our family made me really see the importance of using storytelling with young children. And that led me down to when I worked as an early childhood teacher, working within philosophies that really place storytelling and narrative as a core um, central thread in the curriculum and the ways of working. So working for many years as in Rudolf Steiner settings um, and playgroup settings that work from that um, particular philosophy and really thinking about, well, really seeing how um, it fostered your deep connection with the children in that space. So there's kind of two threads to it that happen. My story is an early childhood teacher, but using storytelling as this amazing tool that supports really strong, positive attachments and connections with young children. And we know that those strong attachments and connections are so important for ensuring children feel secure and safe and have that mm. sense of belonging um, mm. in those early learning environments. So that's, I guess, a little bit about um, the value of storytelling um, in terms mm. of my background and how I've used it as a teacher. That's so beautiful, Jess. It's it's it, it's really strange. It kind of gives me this really warm feeling inside when you when you explain how important it is to to tell stories, especially from the heart. Mm. But then also what what it actually does in terms of strengthening our connection to the children. It's just um, oh, I just love to learn so much more about how you would advocate for that, or how would you how you would promote it and um, help educators to really connect with with either their story or another story and how they can share that with children mm. so yeah you can choose which question you want to answer there but yeah, I guess, well, I guess yeah. <laughs> one of the things I think of when you say that is the importance for both of those things whether you're using storytelling with young children or whether you're sort of thinking and I'll talk a little bit about the importance of how you can sort of connect to your story and why that's so important um, but with really, really young children, bringing storytelling, what's so important about it is that moment of connection, that moment of being calm and finding calmness. And I know people say, how do we do that? We're so busy, we're so overwhelmed with so much. But it's actually a, a real gift, not to our, just to, to ourselves, but also to the child um, to have that moment to step back, um, to be present, to be mindful, to be in the moment. And when I use storytelling with young children, um, and even if I think back to those moments in my child, I think back to my nana. I mean, storytelling can be diverse in its forms. It doesn't just have to be reading a book or mm. it's telling an oral storytelling with a puppet. It can be, you know, um, through making something together, through drawing, through crafting. And I was just thinking about my nana. She used to teach me how to do cross stitch. There would be stories in that <laughs> with how, you know, while we were doing that. So it was all these, all these times that it was a moment of, almost quietness and finding a sense mm. of quietness in yourself so you could then hear that sense of story I don't know if that's answering your question it's probably taking us down a complete rabbit hole no but. no 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 it's just for me that's presence that's exactly what you're know, taking that moment in between well within within the tasks within the experiences and then being so present so aware so mindful of that moment creates a story within itself I remember that time that Jess just spent that moment with me, like while I was, you know, finger knitting or something we would have done yeah. at preschool. Yeah. And and yeah, whatever you were, whatever you were evoking with it within yourself in that moment, whether that was patience with that child or whether that was real care and tenderness and yeah, it evoke it just evokes so much, doesn't it? Mm. And I I think we have to remember that stories have been around for thousands and thousands of years and have been you know used in many in many all cultures I would say have a form of storytelling with them you know, don't quote me on that but yeah. it's integral to human nature to have that sense of being with someone it's a fundamental human need really mm. to have that sense of connection with someone 
And that's why we need to really advocate for that for children, but also in terms for educators to be able to express who they are and express their story um, as individuals. And for those outside of the early childhood sector to understand what it means to be a professional early childhood teacher and educator. Mm. Um, so finding space to hear those stories. And I think that's what your other um, question was about, Alana, that mm. how do we how do we sort of start to find our own story? That you're, you're thinking? Yes, yes, that was the next. Sorry, I'm just so excited about this, Jess. It's probably all coming going, out at the same time. <laughs> off on lots of different threads. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe maybe that's what we could kind of allude to now is um, how how do we connect with our stories? Yeah, well, I guess one of the first things uh, I think that is as part of that storytelling, and even when I was sort of telling you a little bit about where I started and where my early childhood journey started, that, that takes time to think, you know, to slow down, to think. And we all know the importance of time for deep reflection and inquiry, um, mm. professional inquiry. And, and this is something I get really excited about because it is a key um, part of my PhD um, studies at the moment to really think about what it means to provide space to slow down and really think. And when there's so many other pressures on us, we have to really see the value in doing that. Because if we want to sort of think about our own narrative and pulling out and, and why, we, why we are who we are in this moment with children and understand why we teach in the way that we teach, we have to sort of trace that through back to where we even started as a teacher and where that began for us. And it might be as simple as asking questions like, you know, like I was sort of telling you what led me down the path to even get to Teachers College mm -hmm. in Dunedin in New Zealand. You know, what are those mm -hmm. moments um, that you may have had? It could have been an experience with some young cousins. It could have been an experience with a grandmother who cared for you or an auntie that made you see the value in, in being with others or who cared for you. So you might be curious. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. but everyone's story um, and pathway into being an early childhood teacher um, starts in, in such diverse places and this is why this work this story work is so important and if we think about um, some of you know when we talk about research we have a, um, a frame of research called narrative research and there's some wonderful people like Jean Clandinan that people might want to look up and investigate that uses this as a really valid tool for inquiry so thinking about what led you to down that path but also thinking about mm. what important moments do you remember on the way mm. so what when you think back to the journeying um it might have been at teachers college or was teachers college for me university for other people it might have been when you before you even started studying it might have been before that you might have been working with young children there was a moment there mm. it might have been um a, ch a child that you remember from your teaching I, I still remember some of the children that I met along the way from practicums when I was maybe a second year undergraduate student. Yeah, for, wow. For me. That's really special. Yeah, and they, yeah. That, those little moments are the ones that shape you as a teacher. Mm, it might be mm. a mentor that you've had. You know, and I think about some of the mentors that I've had that have really sort of um, guided me on particular paths in a positive mm. way and mm. open my eyes to different ways of working and being with young children so that might be something that you kind of so I guess finding the answers to these questions takes time and this is the important thing we're thinking about um, using storytelling as a form of inquiry and reflective inquiry which I'm really curious and interested in mm. is that we need to actually have time and space for this so as early childhood, and this is a, kind of the underpinnings of my research project, is I want to be able to provide time and space for early childhood teachers to stop and to be present and to just think, who am I? How did I come here? And what does that mean for my work with young children? Mm. How does that shape the, the work that I do? Yeah. Oh, wow, Jess, that's so important such um it's a lot of inner work isn't it and it, it's Absolutely. it just informs what we do so much more and I think because that you mentioned before how um 
you know, we're under a lot of pressure and you, you've been an early childhood teacher on the floor, hands on, you know how much stress we can be under, that it's very hard to find that time and you kind of feel guilty when you do have that time. Yeah. So um, it really does realign you with, with why you're doing this, with your purpose as a teacher. And um, I think I'm kind of connecting with that a little bit more now running my workshops because I often get um, participants to reflect on, on, you know, what are your strengths as a teacher? Um, mm. What do you love? What do you pride yourself on as an early childhood educator? Things like that. So, um, yeah, I definitely believe in the value of what you're doing and it'd be so great to have, I'd love to be on board with that, <laughs> that study and that research. <laughs> It well, is, I hope yeah. you know, keep, once it's, you know, it's, it's many years to come um, before it um, before it will be, you know, finished and published and just studying part time, working full time and all of the other things that life, you know, comes in the way. But mm. I think, you know, it's really important that, as you're saying, Alana, that people hear the stories of early childhood teachers. So then mm. when they hear those stories, um, and this is really, really what I hope, you know, you know, the research changes as you do it and it got, takes you down different pathways. And sometimes it takes you so far away from your original question and inquiry that you, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you thought you were following. Um, but ultimately, I really want people outside our sector to sort of understand this is, this is a really important, valuable work. This mm -hmm. is the kinds of things that, uh, you know, how educators think and why they think the way they do. And for someone who doesn't really know much about early childhood teaching, to be able to pick up a story um, of an educator and to sort of think, wow, this, this, is, this is fascinating. And I guess the, the reason I'm so curious about storytelling is in my master's um, research, I presented that as a series of stories. Um, and people can read that um, if they're interested. So there were four teachers that I um, interviewed and worked with and I was really interested in finding out um, how they formed relationships with children in their first year of attending preschool, preschool setting. Mm. And the force, I think there was four from memory, four sort of key participants in that. I should know that, shouldn't I? <laughs> it was quite a while ago. But yeah, um, <laughs> their um, stories were all incredibly diverse. And that's what I thought was so incredibly valuable to hear. And yeah, mm. you were saying before, you know, people that teach you things along the way they those participants taught me so much about I was still teaching when I did that study so they taught me so much I went back to my teaching context working um, with children and I mm -hmm. saw the, my ways of working in a completely different light from doing that and that's also the value mm -hmm. value of this work when we hear other people's stories mm -hmm. listen listen and tell stories it impacts our work and our ways of working so we get to look outside our kind of bubble and box of how we work and that's why this is really important that we have opportunities to hear about how someone in a different town or a different center or a different suburb works to us because that mm. can then really support our sense of understanding why we work in the way we do Oh my gosh, Jess, it's just so, it's like a whole, it's just something I feel like I've never thought about in, in that, in, in, to that depth. So I just find it so fascinating. And, and I also thought just while you were talking about, um, you know, it'd be great for people outside of our sector to really to understand, mm. you know, <laughs> what, what our lives are like day to day, that this could actually really contribute to systemic change, hopefully, you yeah. know, like your research could do it could do so much for our sector. I hope I'm so, so. excited. <laughs> I, hope, I hope so, Alana. I hope that, um, yeah, people will read it and think um, educators need more time <laughs> to slow down. Yeah. They need yeah. more time to reflect and think about who they and are. Ultimately, more support. If we're going to have that time, we need more yeah. support, which are yeah. less ratios, which is mm. more time off the floor to do reflection, mm. documenting, planning. Mm professional I development I joke about that when you were studying and you came when I mentored you as a student and I think we used to have conversations about ratios didn't we a lot probably yeah. <laughs> but I agree with you I think that perhaps when we hear and I, I see the other thing that's important thing to say about the the research that the literature that I've explored and coming to this question for my research project 
um, has come from this con actual deep concern that we're mm. losing teachers, you know, rapidly in the first few years, you know, I can't give you the actual statistics off my head, but everyone knows that it's really difficult to find early childhood teachers and they leave so quickly because of the conditions and because mm. they don't feel heard. And I think this is a really crucial element to um, exactly what you're saying, that hopefully if we are to project some of those voices, put those voices on the table through a project such as this, people will hear mm. um, why that kind of thing is so important um, and how we can maybe achieve some sustainability from a different perspective um, mm. yeah yeah oh, I really hope so Jess it's um yeah I just I just think all of this is so wonderful and I'd like to I've been wanting to say this I guess from the very beginning that um obviously I always really cherish having you having had you as a mentor um my last my very last year at university but now that um you know, you, you've you've kind of said that storytelling, like, well, connecting with your own story encapsulates not only just the children and the context, but your mentors as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've often said you're someone I would never forget with the 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 such the warming introduction that you gave me into a setting that I had no mm -hmm. idea about, um, that I wanted to really get to learn really well and. I just felt like you were so humble and genuine and um, made that experience so beautiful for me and speaking of st storytelling <laughs> I still remember in my very last week I think I was there six weeks that yeah, sounds about right that was the last your last prank and it was yeah, it was the long one yeah the long one yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um but you had the children either either draw something for me I think they'd all drawn something and then you'd put it in a book mm. and which I just thought was absolutely so lovely anyway but then we were all sitting around for um circle time and I'd never I'd never seen any teacher do anything like this and it just makes me emotional thinking about it that you open the book or the card and you got everyone to have a little wish for me oh, okay. and then they I think they had to blow it inside the card and and then close it but they I had never seen I don't know how many maybe 12 15 three to five year old children just be so sincere in that gesture I'd never experienced anything anything like that and it was just it, that was I like that's a story for me in, in itself you know you, but, you're giving me goosebumps because I can I mean I'm sorry <laughs> but I forgot that <laughs> we covered a lot in six weeks that's okay we did we, we went down and we had lots of bus trips together and coffees together all sorts of things but I think that it's really interesting that I forgot that um and it's and this is a really the power of having an exchange and, and talking and this is you know at the core of storytelling is, is listening and speaking and having conversation um, and that warmth mm. of conversation. I think because what you've just done now, I think it's really, really special, Alana, is you've taken me back to that moment, which, oh. you know, and when as educators, this happens for every, everyone all the time. That, as you alluded to, we're always, you know, we have, you know, we are so fill up each day. There's so many things, so many decisions we have to make each and every day as an early childhood practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. From the moment we walk through that door to the moment we leave even on our lunch break, even when we go to the bathroom, even when we have a quick break for morning tea, we're always thinking and making decisions for mm. those little people that we're with. Mm. Um, so I think that because we are sort of so intensely focused on those moments with young children, that sometimes those moments that other people might see around you, you might not remember or see. So this is why it's even more important to have um, those collegial discussions where someone can mm. say, remember that moment or remember yes. that. Um, so they, whether they get written down, whether they get, I'm not sure, it doesn't have to be. It could be just this moment now that you've had with someone. Mm. Um, I think that's, it's a real gift. It's so special that you remembered that. Yeah. I, oh, of course. I remember amazing. so many things. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember how, I remember you telling stories to the children that I, I'd never heard it. 
I'd never heard a story being told in that way in that setting and seeing children so captivated by you know just I think you might have had three props you had these fish and yeah. Um, they were journeying through the sea and then and then you delicately put them all one by one back into the basket and someone would blow out the candle and like I would just be <laughs> so <laughs> captivated myself you know um yeah no like so many so many fond memories and mm. um and like you said having these discussions with each other again does take you back to those moments so I suppose on a practical level if we're going to invite educators to mm. connect with their story this would be a really great way to do it like perhaps um at staff meetings all having what we would Absolutely. call the golden moment yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. engaging with the mentor or um, something we've been doing actually it just made me think something we've been doing at Gowrie so as part of my work um, with the kind of pedagogy team at Gowrie is and also to support um, the educators within our services to find their story is we've been I mentor um, people and talk to them about key areas of practice and we'll ask them to do a little presentation on our calendar our professional learning calendars and then after that I'll so I'll be with them and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about what they might want to discuss. And then they might write it up as a little story. And in that process, they're sharing stories of their practice. And many of those practices about their ways of working and being with young children, their philosophy and, and way of working, um, mm. often centered on their relationships. So that's also a really wonderful way, you know, as you're thinking practically to connect to listen mm. to others' stories, to find opportunities to do that, whether it's through something like that, whether it's through a team meeting, whether it's through having a conversation with an educator that works with you in your room or another room, um, but finding a way that you can um, create space to think together um, mm. and to hear each other. Um, mm. And I think, you know, I know that's really hard for people because we, you know, how many more team meetings do we have? But it might just be, a conversation like you and I are having here tonight yes um, Judith I don't know if you know Judith Glaser's work Alana she no. actually and that while we're on the subject of stories I was introduced to Judith Glaser's work through a, a wonderful parent from the group um that you might remember I won't say her name obviously she if okay. she's listening she'll know who she is okay <laughs> um, she introduced me to Judith Glaser's work who is um speaks about conversational intelligence and she says that conversations are the golden threads that keep us together so I think Aww, if we're thinking lovely. about storytelling and finding the story and doing this work that we just we have to have more meaningful conversations where we can have that responsiveness to each other mm, absolutely absolutely it's so precious and I suppose also like I know that um well, you know, work, working in a, in a Steiner establishment <laughs> within our philosophy that, you know, one of the biggest parts is that we're doing the inner work and we're reflecting every day on our challenges, on, on our responses to the children and um, interactions we had, positive or, or tricky. <laughs> um, and that also puts a lot into context and kind of makes the story whole because there's not always positive stories, right? It's no. always, there can be a lot of stories where you've gone, oh God, I wish, I hope I don't have to relive, relive that again. Um, but also connecting with, um, yeah, well, why did I respond that way? What is it from my story that's made me mm. kind of see things in this light or have this perception of it? A certain child or struggle with a certain child mm, mm. I know that a lot of this philosophy in in this particular certain setting has um, really helped me to evolve and grow as a teacher because mm. I'm now taking more responsibility for my responses mm. and what my story means for the children in my care mm. and mm. that deep inner work that's exactly what I think you, we have to give ourselves permission to, to, to slow down and to, to have that space and to do that work because as you're saying and I totally agree with you they're not all rosy and peachy the stories we have in our work as early childhood teachers and that's and we probably don't want to relive some of them but those stories are probably ones that have taught us a lot about who we who we are as teachers mm, today right, so we have yeah. to find and this is I guess in my masters I remember some of the participants sharing their struggles one of the participants in that study particularly I visited this service twice um, where it was based 
And I remember when I first went down, she was really going through a big change with how she saw her philosophy and her ways of working. And then when I went down to see her the next time, she had gone through this change and she was like a new person. So she went through this sort of struggle during the research and I sort of captured that in her story. Mm. So I think what you're saying is those moments are really, really important for us to um, be aware of and, and be able to look at. And it's hard to look at them, um, but they help us to kind of fill in the gaps, so to speak, and understanding yes. who we are as a teacher. And to see how much she's, well, this woman I'm thinking of, how she's grown so much in that time, like you can reflect and go, oh, wow, there was a lot of things that maybe I wasn't, that weren't getting resolved in my personal professional life. And then it makes you realise, actually, we've got a lot of resilience. I think educators are some of the most resilient people in the world. <laughs> so it also reminds us of so much, um, so many great characteristics that we have as professionals in this, mm. in this field. Yeah. And yeah. I think it, you know, it connects to our sense of well-being, our sense of professional identity, our sense of, you know, who we are and why we're doing mm. what we're doing. Mm. Our values, oh. all of those things are interwoven. <laughs> you know it's such a multi yeah, really complex um, thing and we're complex um, beings as early childhood teachers mm, mm. Yeah, yeah well yeah <laughs> it's certainly not an easy ride <laughs> being an educator which you know no. um, yeah but there is there's, there must be something in all our stories that really make us want to keep going and yeah. make change and influence these you know, young minds and be a good role model to them. Mm, absolutely. And, um, yeah. Oh, Jess, this is just so wonderful. And I really hope that people can take this, so educators can take this on board and really see how much value it can bring. Because I already feel tonight that I've kind of re-inspired for what I'm doing and um, just appreciating all these little moments that, you know, actually, sometimes when they when they say really funny things, I'll write them down in my phone <laughs> if I have a chance or if I remember in my lunch break. And I always say this in my workshops so that there was this girl many, many years ago who was about four or five, and I asked her if she had brothers or sisters. Mm. Oh, Elke, do you have any brothers or sisters? And she goes, no, I'm single. <laughs> it's a I short just, story, but it's just so <laughs> innocent and sweet. <laughs> And those are the stories of I, so I'm going to tell you a funny one too. When I was teaching at the preschool, I mean, we had mm. um, lots of children, um, we had lots of diverse cultures in our group, and we had a little mm. cohort of girls um, who were all from Japan who had a, a Japanese heritage. And we used to love asking them to sort of, you know, they used to teach us, you know, words and, you know, teach us the words to different names of foods and all sorts of things. They, they loved, they loved teaching us. Um, so it was a really natural thing. And one time I was sitting around at lunchtime and one of the little girls had a tomato in her lunchbox and I was going, oh, yum, you know, what's the word, what is that? You know, like, you know, I was wanting to know what the word was in Japanese. And she just looked at me and she said, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Like I was, I was sort of didn't have any awareness of what that vegetable. <laughs> yeah, <was>. dirge <laughs> exactly. But I think those are the moments they 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 keep us real, and they keep mm. us um connected to to this work of being with these, um, you know, these incredibly precious beings that we're working with. Mm, definitely, and this yeah, there's just so many layers to storytelling, and I found, I found the last few years. I've softened a lot. I, I love having, being humorous with the children, you know. I know we're trying to teach them so much and they need structure and rhythm and, and all these things, but they also want to play. And I think many of us are educators because we still are connected with our own inner child. We want to play too. We love being animated. We love doing fun things in nature. Mm. But um, it's actually a really special thing to be connected to. And like, you know, I liked going to uni and, and, and doing a lot of research and theory and reading books and, of course, learning about the Steiner philosophy, but I enjoy more so just being with them. Yeah. Having a and, laugh with them. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's, I'm so pleased you said that because it just, um, and I know you didn't in, in say that with this intention, but the other part, the, the methodology that I'll use for my um, PhD is to look at use play as a tool to kind of express and explore reflection 
So I think when you're mm -hmm. saying about thinking about play, thinking about being playful, the kind of pedagogy of play and tuning into that, um, it keeps it real and it keeps us authentic, using humour, finding the kind of inner playfulness within ourselves is really, really important. Finding the things that really? we may have played as young children, thinking yeah. back to when we were young children and what was, you know, what, you know, those kind of, you know, ideas of curiosity and wonder um, mm -hmm. become so important. So I think, Alana, I think that's a such a valuable thing to kind of identify within yourself as a, as a teacher that, and I, I really like the way you, you, you describe it as being sort of a softening, you know? So it's almost like a, a coming in and not being, you know, like all those things we have to do on the periphery of our work, but getting to the core of our work, which is about young children and being with young children. Mm. And their sense of being mm. is this world of play. It's, oh, it's such so a valuable easy, reminder. It? it is. It absolutely yeah. is. Mm. Yeah. And I, I think also like... Children are, I mean, they're vulnerable in many senses, but they're vulnerable in a way that they're so authentic and honest. Mm -hmm. And I like that they bring that out of myself. And when I start to soften or I start to become more authentic within myself, I can connect to them much easier. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think it's, as we were saying, leaving our egos at the door. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which I think we've done pretty well, Jess, tonight. <laughs> But I think with children, that's that's something we have to always remember. I don't know if I said that to you when I mentored you, when you as a student, but <laughs> the children will sense when we're not being who we are. And I think mm, that's when you, you did say them, that. Mm, you did. They will. And mm. they ask us to be our authentic selves, you know, and nothing else. So oh, such a nice reminder. Oh, I feel like I need to do like a nice meditation now or something. <laughs> Oh, Jess, it's, it's just been such a rich conversation. And um, yeah, is, is there anything else that you'd kind of like to say before you leave? Or, um, I mean, you, you wrote so many great responses to the email that I wrote you before, and I put some of your quotes in the description. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, if there's anything else that you feel like you'd like to share before we finish up tonight. Um, to sure. fellow I mean, educators. I've got the notes that I wrote and, you know, I've obviously gone you know, diverted completely. But I think that um, it's just so important for educators to do exactly what you're saying, to have that time to slow down and to think and to not feel guilty about reflecting and provide and taking time to reflect and think about your practice. Mm. And to kind of, you know, not feel guilty about maybe thinking back to why. I think that's, that's what I'd maybe like to leave people with, is think, try and trace back what led you to this moment here today? Can you even, can you trace a thread back to what maybe was the kind of little light bulb moment where you thought, I have to be with young children. I will need to work with young children or do this work around young children. And I think for those of us, um, sometimes we need that reminder, that little spark. And that used to help me sometimes when I was, when I had those really tough days, Alana, mm. when you were exhausted. Um, and when you may not have had a long break or a, a lot of a break or whatever was happening, that you have to really think, okay, what is my purpose here for being? Because these children deserve the very, very best of us. So we need to make sure that we <laughs> look after ourselves so we can give that very best because they do. Yes. They deserve that, the connection with us, that relationship with us, whether it's through storytelling or whatever, but they deserve that, um, that person that will care mm. for them and look after them in that way. So I think we need to take time to slow down and ensure that we can be that person. And sometimes that might be tracing back to think about why am I here today with these little people? Yeah, these yeah. little people. Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. That's such a great way to uh, to, to end this um, session and to just have a really good re reflection about. I hope everyone can just like make a cup of tea now and have a real yeah, moment. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> people want to connect with me I'm really open to that if they they can um, find me at the education hub at Gowan New South Wales so mm -hmm. they could just email education I think it's education hub at Gowan New South Wales and just okay. say hi Jessica or whatever um, I love to hear from teachers and educators I mean as I've said to you tonight I learned so much from being with educators now in this mm. role it's a huge privilege so 
um, yeah, if, if you're listening tonight and you're <laughs> curious, um, yeah, definitely touch base with me via that email. I'd love to connect with you. Oh, great. That's that's so uh, generous of you, Jess. And what I'll do is when we hop off, I'll just put it in the title, the, yeah. the email, just in case. Do that. Yeah. Get across. Um, I don't know how many people would want to do that, but the offer's there, you know. <laughs> you know, you just want to have a conversation with someone. Yeah, um, I'm yeah. sure many people be really would love happy that. To do it. Yeah, because yeah. I take a lot from that too. It's, you know, it's important that we have oh. space for that. So, oh, Jess, I think you're, I really think you're an amazing person <laughs> and, and what you're doing for our sector, just, it's just so needed and it's so, um, it's so meaningful and purposeful and everyone could be benefit so much from just taking that moment and that space to do everything you've explained tonight. So yeah, well, I hope thank so. you and so, so much for oh, your time. It's and, lovely. And yeah. you're doing amazing work too. Alana. <laughs> thank you for providing this space for people. Um, I think it's, it's so important. It's so valuable that we have it. So hats off to you <laughs> as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you. But it's people like you that, you know, I find we're we're always inspiring each other I don't ever feel like I've got all the answers and then when I do I'm like okay I need to I need to reach out now and find another way of seeing things Absolutely. and yeah everyone's going to connect with something different um but my motto which I'm very I'm quite proud I made up I, I always say that your personal development is your professional development mm -hmm. absolutely I that really think it is both yeah both those both sides of who we are are so important to find that that linkage you know that connection mm. I think that's a really important and that comes from connecting with your story there you go yeah. <laughs> absolutely all right Jess well thank you again so so much it was just oh, so nice to just see you anyway <laughs> have a conversation and chat yeah, yeah. Absolutely. all right um okay. yeah and I'll put those details up on the on the post yeah. afterwards and um yeah, enjoy the rest of your week and good luck and all the best with your with your PhD studies and hopefully you'll we'll have some people get in touch with you. Maybe, yeah. Uh, but I haven't obviously started the recruit for that yet, but um, and I have to go through a whole process of ethics and things. Um, mm. But people, if people are interested, keep your eyes out on social media and stuff because I might put a, um, you know, I might put a notice out on there at some point in the future. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All okay. right, well, take care. You? Yeah, you too, Jess. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for watching. <laughs>